be awesome for you know it would be awesome for everybody watching i think you know to actually if we could get it heads up i would love that i would love that i think it'd be great for everybody it'd be great for poker it'd be great for twitch so let's make it happen but you know starting you know in two minutes when you all can hear this and you know but jumping the gun and saying david sklansky is out before he actually is is going to disqualify you from the race okay so don't do it just after he's out be the first one to type it in and you know for anybody who's who's watching Skolansky is Legum. One. this is a simple one no we're not doing that why uh, this is what i love michelle i love my my girlfriend so much she says we should do a simple contest like ask everybody when you won your first Cause bracelet cause they can google it <laughs> and whoever's the fastest googler no we're, we're gonna do it right we're going to i think people should be awarded for being able to type quickly <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I gotta it. go take the dog pee now. Okay, so this is going to be a re-raise here. I'm not gonna be able to. If he comes out, I'm not gonna be able to. We're doing look. a pot size bet. Fail contest. And we're gonna hope to just take it down without a flop. Uh, we probably have the best hand, and it's not really a hand that plays that well out of position. So we we kind of want to discourage them from calling. You know, and being able to just pick up the the, the pot there without uh, without a flop is just fine. If by chance be the light had called, we would have had a continuation bet about the same amount. You know, probably actually even a little more. We probably would have continuation bet half the pot since we're out of position, and we wouldn't have loved it because we wouldn't really know where we were at. Uh, if the pot came out pretty dry and he shoved, we probably aren't going anywhere. And uh, if he had a bigger pocket pair, we're probably losing, you know, 7,000 there, which would suck. But when you have, a, you know, a preflop min raiser and you're sitting there in a the small blind with pocket fives it, and everyone folds to that, you know, preflop raiser who's in a pretty good spot to steal, it, you're just giving up too much equity if you just auto fold. And, you know, what's the next best thing? Calling? Calling, inducing the you know the big blind to come along with you for a cheap flop, and then you're playing out of position against two opponents with pocket fives. No, thank you. Just you know, raise there, raise the pot, take it down, and uh, be prepared to go the distance. You know, play a little poker if you actually have to see a flop. Now, if he would have, you know, if he if he would have shoved all in there for another five thousand, would we have called? Uh, we would have thought about it, but. Probably not. You know, we're probably going to go ahead and fold there and just take the $2,000 loss. He has enough where, uh, you know, it, it, we can get away from the hand without losing anymore. So, 5-3 suited. It looks pretty good to steal with. If we get, if everyone folds to us, we're going to go ahead and raise. Now, we like what Be The Light is doing here, right? He was making min raises and getting re-raised and having to fold. So now he makes three times a big blind. Let's see what he does with that. I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that he can't really stand a raise here either. You know, a lot of times when you see players, you know, get raised off a of hand when they make a min raise, and then they change up their amount, a lot of times it's not because their strength changed. It's because, well, in this situation, his strength changed. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And Pocket Queens goes down in flames. Ace Jack takes it down. Too bad for you, my friend. Okay, so we have M. Lawson here. M. Lawson is a uh, regular here on WSOP.com, and I strongly suggest that that is either Ted Lawson or, uh, or maybe it is his wife, Michelle Lawson. Um, either way, we're looking at we're looking at a regular, and if it, you know, best case scenario is we're looking at a regular with a uh, with a bracelet as a rail. So, just to, nice to know who we're playing with here. It's kind of interesting too, you know. I, per per seat, WSOP.com probably has more bracelets per entrance than any online you know any online site, any online tournament there is. It's you know here we are playing a a $30 tournament, uh, essentially a $90 tournament, and uh, gosh, making all sorts of bad plays. Wow, how do we fold that? How do we just get off on some tangent where we're not even where we're not even paying attention and realizing that we are getting way the odds to call there? 
I don't know, guys. Did you get a winner? Uh, no, I mean, we wouldn't have won anyway, but... Uh, no, did, you, did you lose, or are you out of your poker tournament? Uh, no. Oh. I'm not out of the poker tournament. I'm doing quite well. Leave and then see we're fourth. Happens. Right now we're fourth okay, out of so 63. Okay, so didn't anybody win the draw? Not yet. I'm pretty sure Skolanski is still in it. I think you should make a phrase and type it, and whoever types that phrase the fastest. No, no, no. We're not doing it. We're, oh, man. We're going to, we're going to stick with the, the giveaway that we have. We want, we want to be able to the focus. The competition's unfair, we say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they, they, if they're not in Nevada, they can't watch. Now, I realize that's very unfair. But uh, you know what? It's okay. Enough of, I think enough of our, uh, of our watchers are, in, are actually here in Vegas that it's okay. We're going to give away a book to someone here in Vegas then. So, and, and keep in mind, too, that you could always just pull up his Twitch stream on another, uh, you know, on another, uh, in another window. Yeah, but they can't. It's hard to do both. Yeah, but, I understand. Um, I apologize to everyone who is not in Vegas. Um, this is a poor planner of contests. This was a, a, a quite quite poorly planned. I think you should just type the, the box in the, the, the typing thing. The box in there. Whoever types out the fastest. No, we're not. We're, we're not changing the competition. Uh, we're we're keeping the contest because I want to be able to know just by looking over at the chat whether uh, whether our favorite two plus two moderator is still in or not. So, uh, no, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not going to change. I'm sorry, guys. I'm too old to change. I tried, everybody. Yes. But we will have more giveaways. I promise you guys we're going to have more giveaways. Okay. You know, we're going to have a lot more Twitch streams. You and I are going to become real tight friends. You know, there's going to be lots and lots of opportunities for you to, uh, you know, for, for you to win stuff. So... Let's see what we're looking at. We got a little limp here from Zizzy7. This is the kind of limp that makes baby Jesus cry. You know, like anytime you see an open limp, especially at this stage in the tournament, it's just such a huge mistake. And I gotta say, if B Water didn't raise here, I probably would have. It's just, you know, what is he trying to do? And I actually think that this is the perfect amount to raise here, too. You know, the, the, the right amount pre-flop raise should be about 750, so two and a half times the big blind plus the, the open limp. I think that B Water's raise here was perfect. I wish he didn't make it because I would have, and I would have actually, you know, just nailed the flop with bottom pair flush draw. Okay, Spade Skill says, Turn on four colors, Dutch. Come on, make it easier on the eyes for your fans. Uh, you know what? That's a good idea. I... I am going to do that just for you. Just for you, Spade Skills. Let's go ahead and turn on those four colors. Uh, table layout, maybe? Is that what we're looking at? Choose your card's face. And let's apply it. Thank you for the suggestion, Spade Skills. And uh, we're going to try to make this a four color deck from here on out. I think that's a great idea. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and make that thousand fifty play just like we would have against ZZ Seven. We're just gonna we're gonna punish the limpers. We're going to try to isolate it when they're coming in with this open limp. We know it's a mistake, so let's get it heads up against a guy who's making a mistake and let him make another mistake when uh, we flop the straight. <laughs> Fire out the 1,050 and hope that uh, he hit huge. Now we're hoping that he was slow playing aces or kings because he's in for a uh, rude awakening. So who else do we have here? Rick Lude, I hunt and peck still. Don't do a typing contest. Don't do a typing contest. I think that is, I think that is probably <laughs> good advice there, Rick Lude. Well, we should answer a question because I think you're... Well, do whatever you want to do, honey, but... J.D. Cole asks, are you going to play the $1,000 online tournament? If not, can I come over to your house and use your Wi-Fi? <laughs> um, McDonald's has free Wi-Fi. Yeah, McDonald's has free <laughs> Wi-Fi. So does the Rio. So does the Rio. Does during, the, uh, during, the during the World Series of Poker? During the World Series of Poker, I suspect that you'll be able to take your laptop right over to the World Series, you know, set up right there on the stage to watch someone win a bracelet as you're... Yes, you're winning yours in the $1,000 No Limit. 
Um, am I going to play the Thousand No Limit? I'm not planning on it. You know, I actually feel like I feel like uh, I'm a much stronger player live, and I'm I think that later on in that day, the four o'clock p.m. tournament is the stud high low event. So I'm not planning on, you know, I, I feel like Stud High Low is actually one of my stronger games. I've got, you know, multiple final tables in Stud High Low. Um, and, you know, a second place in Raz, which is basically just a dumbed-down version of Stud High Low. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Stud High Low's special needs, you know, uh, half-brother. So uh, am I going to play the online 1K tournament? No, I think it's going to be a great value. But I feel like for me personally, my strength is in actually being able to look across the table and make reads on people. And I think that I'm going to have a much stronger ROI, a much stronger edge, and a much stronger chance at actually taking home a gold in the stud high low later on that, that evening. Uh, that being said, if, that, if, if, the, uh, if the schedule didn't have a nightly tournament or a noon tournament that I really wanted to play that day, I would be in there with the rest of them. I hope that it gets a thousand players, and I hope that uh, you know. I, I hope that it sets some records, or you know, I, I think that it's 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 a good thing. I don't really think that an online bracelet event takes anything away from you know the World Series of Poker. Uh, recently, you guys might have saw you know Mike Sexton kind of coming out against the World Series of Poker for diluting the value of a bracelet, and I just don't see it. I really don't. I think uh, hey, is David. A is he out now? Russ, can you look at your thing? Yeah, I will. I Somebody will look. Said. Nope. Legum is still in, and we're going to say that 4-2-0 oh, poker is uh, not qualified to win the tournament anymore. <laughs> good chance, good shot, 4-2-0 oh, poker. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Searsist asks, does, they, does Lazar or Fishman give better hugs? Great question. Uh, I would say that uh, Fishman gives better hugs, but Lazar's lasts longer. <laughs> and no, we're not going to ban anybody that gives incorrect updates on Skolansky. We're going to, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to disqualify them from the, from the tournament, from, from, the, from the competition. And no, I would I would so love for Skolansky to make this final table with me. Right now he's 35th out of 60. I'm sixth out of 60. So I like our chances. I like our chances, friends. And listen, if you're having a good time, you know, thanks for uh, spending your Wednesday night with us. Thanks for watching, and thanks for, you know, thanks for supporting our our Twitch stream here. Uh, I. No, no, no. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing minutes. just fine. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm two minutes behind listening to the... No, I'm just, I'm just, you know, giving you all a shout out. Thank you for, you know, spending your Wednesday night. And uh, I hope that, I, I hope that you're enjoying yourself. I hope that maybe you're picking up a little bit. You know, we're just all trying to make the right moves. What do we do here? We're just going to go ahead and call. This isn't a situation where we really need to get the big blind out. It's also not a situation where we really have any idea where we are against the preflop razor. So we go ahead and call and hope to just flop, you know, some sort of crazy monster. You know, we're, we're here to play some poker. So that's what we're going to do. Now what do we do? We go ahead and give it a shot. You know, if Silver Moon actually had Ace High Beat, we got to think that maybe he would, uh, we would have heard of him before now. BCM Claw's call here is troublesome. We got to probably put him on a Jack or a 7, maybe even a 6. We're not really going anywhere. You know, we're not, we're not calling anything that he puts in here. We're going to go ahead and check fold and uh, assume that he has a, an ace eight beat. You, want some candy? you know, the, the problem is, even if he had some sort of weird draw, he just caught up. The only draw that we can really be ahead of here is if he had like a king queen or if he had like a nine ten. So we just go ahead and check fold there. We tried to take it, we tried to play great poker. You know, and uh, we, when the six hit, we go ahead and fire out a half pot bet and hope to get through the the, the big blind and the preflop razor, who probably probably actually had like uh, a better ace high, but he's probably not going to call with a better ace high, especially when the board pairs and he's worried that he could be even just drawing dead. So uh, I don't I don't hate the fire out there. We could have had the best hand, you know. 
we uh, we took a shot and we missed. So spade skills. I've never seen blue hearts. I don't really know what the deal is with the uh, the color selection here. Let me take a look and see if there's uh, some other. I don't think that there's really any other card face that we can choose, guys. This is it. This is the four color deck. And yeah, it's not perfect. WSOP.com, the software is not perfect. But they're trying. You know, they're trying. So you got to give them a little bit of credit. Here we're going to go ahead and make it 900. We're lowering our preflop raise amount to 2.25 times the big blind. We're hoping that Michelle Lawson or Ted Lawson looks down at the old 8 3 offsuit and decides not to play. Uh, now we're hoping that they didn't have the old 8-3 offsuit. Our seed bed is going to be the same. We can probably expect, uh, you know, that's great. That's perfect. We want to see them check fold to us, you know. A lot of times you're going to see, you know, weaker players check call there with two over cards hoping to hit their six out or hoping that the 12% happens. You'll see, you know, some stronger players check raise with their ace highs, actually thinking that it's the best hand. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy to see that, uh, you know, our our post flop continuation bets still have a little bit of uh, credibility, even with uh, some of the tourney regs like M. Lawson. So yeah, guys, if you're enjoying the stream, just uh, you know, do me a favor, you know, hit that uh, hit that little follow button down there. It really means a lot. It really does. Uh, we've got, I think, a little over 200 followers. It would be great if we could get that up to, you know, get that up to 300 by the end of the night. That would just be really, really awesome. And uh, it just it makes it all worthwhile. It makes all this, uh, you know, sitting back and I feel like we. You know, I, I feel like I'm giving away a little bit of equity by, you know, trying to focus on the Twitch stream at the same time that I'm focusing on uh, the table itself. You know, Ace-4 offsuit, is this is this really a raise under the gun plus one? Ugh. It's not a great hand. You know, this isn't, this isn't a situation where we look down at Ace-4 offsuit and think, yes! But it is a bet. You know, like, it, it's okay to go ahead and try to take it down. Now... The lucky D ducky goes ahead and calls, and we got a big blind calling. We're going to go ahead and continuation bet here, half the pot against two guys. There's a decent argument for just giving up. You know, it's okay to give up when you're up. You know, when you're against two people, the flop isn't exactly super dry. Uh, and we got to put the lucky on like a pocket. You know, he's probably looking at like pocket nines or, you know, like over cards to a ten. It's going to be hard to lose him. At the same time, you know, we've got him covered. And you know, when he makes that call on the flop, we're, you know, we're basically telling, telling him that this hand could get expensive for you, buddy. So, I don't know. Ace-4 offsuit. You know, we just saw that maybe we'd go ahead and make that raise. But right now, since we just lost a little bit, we just, you know, we just lost uh, you know, a significant chunk of ourselves. We just lost... Uh, over 2,000, you know, which is a decent, you know, 5% of our stack. We got to slow down a little bit. Uh, if uh, General rule of thumb is if you're making steals, don't make two in a row. You know, just take it easy. If you succeed in, in just a flat steal, uh, you know, lay back a little bit. Take a hand off. If, uh, if you don't, even more of a reason to take a hand off. Now, this could get kind of fun. You know, we've already told B-Water you can't limp in or you're going to see a three times a big blind raise. We'll see if he tries to make the mistake again. No. Nope. You know, good for him. He decides to change it up here and not just limp in. We're going to go ahead and raise here. Now, if he re-raises us, we're not going anywhere. Uh, pocket 10s is a pretty big hand heads up in, you know, in, in a big blind, small blind confrontation. So we're not going anywhere if he were to have re-raised. And we don't blame him to, you know, for trying to raise because we already told him that if he limps in that we're going to make it a little expensive for him.
So now we have M. Lawson, who is still playing a, uh, a style that's reminiscent of 2005, where more than three times a big blind is a good raising amount. I don't really, I don't really agree with this raising amount. I think that uh, as the tournament progresses, as the implied odds get lower, and as the effective stacks um, start evening out, you know, to to more around 30, 40 big blinds that, you know, you, you start, you should start raising pre-flop, you know, ever closer to two times a big blind. So I don't really love it. This is kind of an, in, an interesting spot here. We do have ace-queen suited. If this were ace-queen offsuit, um, you know, I, I think that a raise would be better. But I actually think a call here is going to be okay because... This is going to induce the small blind and the big blind to go ahead and come in and see a flop with us. And, the, you know, we're still very deep against that big blind and, uh, you know, and under the gun stack. So we we can get into a situation where maybe we, we just, you know, flop the joint and we're up against an even bigger, uh, a bigger hand. Here, you know, I'm very tempted to go ahead and fire off a half pot bet. But I'm also kind of thinking that it's okay to take a free card too. You know, we're playing this kind of timidly. You know, this is this is actually a pretty big hand that we, uh, you know, might have been able to. You know, we might have been able to win, you know, a, a thirty-four hundred dollar pot here without, you know, even a even a flop. Um, now what do we do? Look at this joker, firing in four hundred into a four thousand dollar pot. You know, even if uh, even if all we have is a three for an out. Uh, a, a call's right with this spot. Yeah, it's 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 kind of sick. I, I like what's going through Silver Moon's head here, where uh, where a minimum bet is right. I mean, is it possible that he's sitting here with like six three? I don't think so. I almost think that you know if we put him to the test, we win. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and give it up. We'll lose to King Jack. What did we lose to? Queen 10. What did Silver Moon have? Let's go ahead and look at that. So Silver Moon had Jack 8 of hearts, and his bet was some sort of weird blocker bet to try to get us not to uh, bet him out of the pot. It's interesting. So we had the Lucky Ducky with Queen 10 of hearts, Silver Moon with Jack 8 of hearts. We probably would have been able to take it down if we raised pre-flop. And we might have been able to take it down if we would have just bet half the pot on the flop. Um, missed opportunity. Let's go ahead and not, not think about it. Otherwise, it'll keep us up at night thinking about how we just gave up one-eighth of our stack because uh, we decided to turn ace-queen suited into a super weak holding. So, you got to love situations like this where... I, if if I, I I was looking at the last hand replay, I didn't quite see how that went in, but I gotta assume that it probably went all in pre-flop. You gotta love these spots where Silver Moon decides to waste what is essentially you know fit, uh, uh, almost twenty five percent of his stack with Jack Eight suited, and then decides to shove with King Seven suited. Uh, I mean, is that what we just saw? Did we just see him shove pre-flop? Is that how that went? Okay, so he min-raised with the, the old king seven ball and called when he got shoved up, shoved back. Uh, it's just it's just horrible. You know, if if you're going to be ready to to call off your stack with king seven suited, then it's so much better to shove first rather than entice somebody to make that move up against you. Uh, really just unforgivable. That actually is going to go ahead and earn a bony fish. Okay guys, so we're sitting here at 31,000, pretty good. Pretty good spot. We have uh, 60 big blinds, uh, which is just great. Cruising stack. 
you know, it allows us to really open up our game, play some poker, take a lot of flops, try to outplay the opponents. Um, we're still going to be sticking to our primary game plan, which is to be the first uh, to open. Open for, at this point, we're going to be going for 1100 um, which is, you know, 2.2% uh, of the pot. And we're going to get it heads up against a small blind or a big blind, and we're going to come in with a uh, with a continuation bet. Um, two and a half times a big blind, B water, we'll, we'll go ahead and fold for you, buddy. So far, you know, I don't really feel like B water's been making that many mistakes, really. I think that his, his pre-flop raise amount is about right on. You know, he's been isolating well. So we're going to go ahead and say that so far we're, you know, hats off to you, B water, you're playing okay. Silver Moon, on the other hand, not so great. Not so great. So, you know, a couple people have asked to see the lobby. Let's go ahead and see if we can't go ahead and share that on, uh, we'll go ahead and add that source. So here we go. This is the, this, this is the lobby of the, uh, this, this is our lobby. We got, uh, I'm 10th out of 55, and first place is 1,900, second is over a grand. So we're playing for some real money here, guys, and I'm hoping to, uh, I'm hoping to take it down. Pad the bankroll, have a successful Twitch stream where, you know, we get to start off with a bang. And we'll be bringing that lobby up a few more times. So we got a, uh, a little over a two times big blind raise by BCM Claw. Nice raise. Nice raise. And then we got uh, basically a min raise by M Lawson. That's kind of interesting, <laughs> you know. I, I I don't know what I don't know what those, is in the water over at the Lawson house. I I don't know when this is a good move. You know, basically she's he or she you know is is just trying to isolate. Um, but I, I, I feel like it's better to raise a little more, you know, just to make a min raise is just, you know, the chances that you're ever going to be able to see the flop with, you know, without, uh, you know, the, the, the chances that you're ever going to be able to win the pot without a flop is, is just non-existent when you're making the min raise. I, I mean, a lot of, a lot of the, some of these younger hoodie kids have been making min raises, but. I don't like it. I like making it, you know, like two and a half times, maybe three times. If you're out of position three times, if you're in position two and a half times, I, I feel like making it that min raise is just kind of announcing, I've got aces or kings here, guys. You know, I feel like, I feel like there's just not a lot of hands there that BCM Claw is, uh, is going to call that turn bet with because it, 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 you know, maybe M. Lawson is just playing levels ahead of all of us, but I, I, I just think that she had aces or kings there, and she basically announced to the whole table that here's aces, here's kings. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, slow play it a little bit, and that's what she did. You know, it came out nine high. What do we got? Oliver, you want to start poker nineteen, right? Three nineteen. Let's see. What age did you start playing poker? Yeah. Uh, the first time I played a real money poker hand, mm -hmm. um, I was 18 years old. 18. 18 years old, and it was uh, it was actually no, I think I would I actually would have been 17. It would have been at the tail end of 1990. No, I'm gonna say 18. It's it's gonna be um, early 1999. And the, my first real money hand was on Planet Poker, planetpoker.com, uh, the very first online poker site. Uh, six, you know, fast forward six months and I started playing, uh, you know, my, my first actual physical real hand was at uh, a little card room in Mountain View, California called The Wagon Wheel. So here we're going to make it two and a half times, 2,500. We're going to hope that B Water just gives it up. But what we don't want to happen is we don't want BCM Claw and Dose to be able to come along for a cheap flop. You know, we figure that we have the best hand here. So we're probably going to have to see a flop. You know, we, 
if B water comes over the top of us, depending on how much he, he comes over the top of us, maybe we, you know, maybe we call, maybe we fold. And when he does come along, we're hoping to, you know, that what happens, we're hoping what just happened happens, which is we flop a set, we make the exact same amount that we raised pre-flop on any flop. You know, we're making this 2,500 bet whether we flop the set or not. And we just hope that he comes along for the ride. You know, here, so now he's making, we go ahead and give a little half pot bet. And we actually hope that he has something uh, that's not a set of fives or a set of tens. We're hoping that he has like an ace ten or aces or kings that he's slow playing. We're hoping that, you know, maybe he has ace ten and decides not to get, you know, not to let it go. And we'll see. There we go. And that's how we do it. That's how you don't play pocket aces. That's going to be putting us in a pretty good situation. You know, now he gets to go home and talk about his bad beat. Right, he gets to talk about what a bad beat he just suffered where he uh, lost with aces against pocket twos. He'll probably change it up a little bit too. You know, he'll probably make it kind of sound like that was a lot worse than it was because really the the vast majority of those chips went in after he was drawn to two outs so good situation for us that actually puts us in second position i'm going to uh probably put the uh, the lobby up here in a second now this is a tough spot you know we, we raised pre-flop we don't love it but uh and if dost had actually folded then we would definitely fold but we're actually in a weird spot where if we fold here, we're, we're losing credibility for our preflop raises. And 8-7 suited doesn't play that horribly, where we are getting, you know, 4-1 to one on our call. We're going to know pretty much exactly where we are. We're hoping...